Hello and welcome to a pro patch breakdown here at LOL Class. Let's take a look at this week's changes. The S change is pretty interesting. It makes it so that she's not as burst anymore because you can't just throw a volley out, hit the entire team and instantly activate your Q for tons of damage. You have to slowly get it up. It'll be a little bit slower, but it'll have some impact. Uh, you might miss a kill every now and then. You might not be able to slow someone, stuff like that. Uh, it's just a little bit more difficult to activate your Q now with uh, it only granting one stack per volley or arrow. It still does one one stack per auto attack, so I think it's okay. So the Brom changes are pretty damn good. Uh, reduce the uh, mana cost and increase the damage, which all around just strictly buffs, no downside at all. Usually with these kind of changes, they're changing something else around the kit to compensate, but pretty nice. I don't know really why they wanted or decided to give Brom just random power, uh, but I do think it's nice. He hasn't really been in the meta as of recent. He's always been a unique champion. Dodging his Q used to be uh, the kind of play to him and, and his ulti. So he's pretty skillful. Not really annoying to play against. I, I enjoy playing against Brum. The nerfs to Echo's base attack speed mostly hurts him in the jungler because he's starting to come up not just as a mid or a top pick but also as a jungle pick. So it's going to reduce his early game jungle speed. Um, for the ult, it costs a little bit more mana, but you also have more mana per level, so it kind of cancels out uh, towards the middle of the game. Um, the slight AP ratio on, on Q is going to be... It's a decent hit, but it's only on the initial hit, so I don't think it's going to be changing things too much. He's still going to be a strong champion, but probably more so in solo lanes than in the jungle. So the biggest thing about Echo's change was that his R was changed from 0 mana to 100, and... Also, his um, ratios on Q was reduced by half, which is pretty much a lot. And then everything else is pretty, like, minuscule, like, attack speed and attack speed per level growth is, like, whatever. But the main thing about Echo is that his W is pretty game-breaking if, he, if he's able to get off the stun. And now, since his Chrono Break costs mana, that means that he can't greedily not go for mana items. Like, he has to get, like, some kind of mana item, whether it's Sheen or, you know, maybe mana regeneration for Morellos. It makes him think twice about going insane and makes him th actually think about his mana usage when it comes to his ultimate. So for Elise's W, instead of pressing W and then getting Spell Vamp or Lifesteal from the spiders, she now just gets natural Lifesteal, where she just attacks normally and you don't have to press W. And when you press W, it doesn't increase that health at all, it just stays the same. As for E, when she jumps down from her Rappel, her small spiderlings get a buff where they attack, like, they just have attack bonuses on that scale per level and as for Elisa's spider form the R it just has increased tool tips of explaining to new players what it actually do actually does so for example when Elisa's in a spider form she runs faster and it wasn't displayed that way before with this new change Elise may be slightly more viable as a top laner mainly because in spider form you get sustained back and that may change her dynamic a little bit more. So Galio's new ult in this change has basically made him more like Maokai in a sense where he's tankier when he's ulting and he does more damage for all of the damage that's done to him. So let's say if you're not auto attacking him when in the rage and there's people casting from outside the circle, he'll do more damage to the people in the circle from that and it goes up to 80% bonus damage. In my opinion, this makes Galio more viable, but it's way too easy to cancel, so it may not change too much. The change to Galio is a nice little change, especially later in the game if you can hit multiple people and you can get a huge burst, but... Overall, I don't think it's going to change Galio as much as the champion because he's still heavily countered by items like QSS and Summer Spell Cleanse. So I don't think we're going to be seeing a lot more Galio, but it is a good change towards for the better. So since Gragas is such a strong jungler, they decided to nerf him where his base HP regen per second was reduced slightly. Her H his HP regen per level 
has been reduced and now the slow duration on the queue has been reduced but it also scales up to 150% as the queue is staying there. So instead of a two second slow, it's 1.3. And it's not the hugest nerf, but I think it's a good direction of where it should be balanced. Cause right now Gragas is just kind of really, really broken where he kind of just maxes W and just ease onto someone and does a billion damage when he's a tank. With this change, Gragas will be slightly less prioritized, but I still think that he'll be a really strong pick, just less commonly banned. So Jarvan's E Damasian Standard has been reduced from 13 to it into a scaling where at max level it's 11. What this does is Jarvan will be able to have more mobility slightly by two seconds. So when you EQ combo, you'll be able to do it again two seconds sooner than you normally would. Um, besides all the CDR, if you have Frozen Heart or a Spirit Visage. It's a pretty noticeable buff, but it won't make him completely broken. It'll just make him more viable as a top laner and a jungler. So Jax's ultimate Grandmaster's Might. The armor and MR bonus has been increased slightly. What this does is it makes Jax even more tanky in um, the R form. And what this allows is so Jax can survive longer. Jax is already a late game monster, but it'll really help his mid to late game team fights that he has that 20 and more MR and armor. Since Jax can't always build defensive items very early, it'll make up for his lack of um, defense when going in hard. These changes to Lux are actually some pretty big quality of life buff, uh, buffs that means you might actually see you in competitive play. The shield shielding immediately means you can shield a lot more spells as you see them coming. You don't have to actually anticipate the spell since the shield is instantly. It doesn't come after the animation anymore. Uh, also that you're able to pre-donate the E means a lot less latency, especially if you're playing on live server. If you have 50 or 100 ping, it feels like you're gonna you're missing these. But just like Gragas Barrel, you can donate it before it hits and it'll donate as soon as it hits the ground and I think it's just going to make her a lot more of a reliable champion being able to hit the E more reliably and shielding harass more reliably. The buff to Malphite's W is just, it is a minor buff but it's going to really pay off when you start buying a lot of armor. Um, Malphite is still mainly picked against heavy AD comps so this is going to make him even better. It's going to make him more of a situational pick but you can even see him in the mid lane or top lane or anywhere. Against a heavy physical damage team he can definitely be a good champ. So with new, the new Malphite W, it allows him to do more splash damage. Although the splash range is reduced by 25, you kind of have to like leash the camps to where the minions are close enough to each other. But um, Malphite's armor is also increased by 10%. What this means is even though Malphite does less damage later on, he becomes even more tanky. And at late game Malphite, when you just keep on spamming W and you have like 500 armor or something, it makes you even more unkillable than before. So what Riot did with the new Rise passive, Rise Q and Rise W is they made him a lot more balanced to where his passive doesn't last for that long. So where he isn't smashing his face on the keyboard and getting a billion W's off. Now it's reduced to three and then it scales up to five eventually. And what this does is it balances his early to mid game where he isn't so ridiculous. And when they changed his Q, they made his Q do slightly more damage and the mana cost scaling where it goes from 30, 35, 40, all the way up to 50. And what this does is it enforces you to max Q because it does the most damage and it's the most efficient skill. And the reason why you have to max Q is because of the W change. What happens here in the W change is that the damage is slightly reduced, but the big thing about the W change is that the root was reduced very heavily. And on top of that, the W was so good because of the old passive. And since the passive is nerfed, W is now no lo longer a ridiculous threat when it comes to Wing someone five times until they're dead and they can't even move and you have Rise on Earth mode and Summoner's Rift. For Trundles R, they changed the mid to late game buff where instead of 24% at mid game, it would be 27.5. And instead of 28% at the max rank, 
it's 35%. What this does is, it, since Trundle is already a late game monster where he just destroys tanks, he is now even more of a late game monster where he is health regen and health drain from his ult, probably similar to Mundo's late game, except he just he's just a completely different champion. So on the new enchantment Rune Glaive, what it basically is is, for example, if you were building like the Brutalizer path into the other enchantment, now it's just a it's a different item where instead of a Codex you're getting a Sheen. And what this does is for AP junglers such as maybe Evelyn, it makes it easier to proc the Sheen and do camps. You also get back a lot of mana on top of the bonus mana you already get from Sheen. And you get 40 AP from the Sheen itself. So for the new Defensive Mastery Tree, it may look complicated at first, but all it really is is they've gotten rid of the useless masteries, such as um, Runic Blessing, a mastery that no one ever used because it's pointless. And the biggest change about the defensive mastery tree is there's a new mastery um, thing called adaptive armor. And what it does is when you have more armor than MR, it will give you 3% more magic resist of what you already have. On the opposite side, if you have more magic resist than armor, it will give you 3% more armor that you have. And what this does is it makes it really, really good against hybrid teams. Whereas if you were stacking armor because they had a really fed vein and let's say their mid was like a little far behind and you have too much armor, you'll get 3% magic resist, which will help you deal with the magic side of the enemies. Since you spec for armor, you won't have that magic resist you need but since with this point it slightly helps you there it's a small change but it really helps a lot for just one point another big thing about the tree is the last tier tier 7 legendary guardian it's become the new um it's become the new uh six tier thing where you have four points and you get armor and magic resist per enemy champion. Now for one point you just get three armor and three magic resist for each nearby enemy champion. And what this does is it gives people initiative to put at least 21 points in the defensive tree instead of just putting 15 defensive and 15 in offense. And it it really really makes the tanks outshine the hybrid tanks that where people are getting away with going 15-15 and still getting like most of the defensive tree stats that really matter to them. Um, another thing is a lot of the very useful points were moved down and up in the tree. So for example, instead of having enchanted armor, which was the percentage armor and magic resist gain, you now have swiftness, which reduces the effectiveness of slows up to 15%, which is really big in my opinion and for oppression it's way down farther down the tree where it reduces damage by two percent that are slowed snared or taunted or any cc impaired um now instead of having the 15 15 tree where people can just get that for free they have to go all the way down there to get the the reduced damage and two percent is really really big because it's comparable to the double-edged sword where it gives you 2% damage in melee form and just 1.5 in ranged. And this just makes tanks a lot tankier and just do a little bit less damage. And it makes defensive tree actually a defensive tree. And that's it for this pro patch breakdown. Thanks for watching, and for more League of Legends content featuring the pros, make sure to visit lowclass.com.